Hello and welcome to Dateline London. Syria. Now Russia has joined in with bombs and in a week dominated in British politics by Labour's new leader, Jeremy Corbyn, what are the big challenges ahead for the Conservatives as they prepare for five more years? My guests today are Mustafa Karkouti of Gulf News, Nabila Ramdani, who's a French-Algerian writer, Stephanie Baker of Bloomberg Markets and Polly Toynbee of The Guardian. Very good to see you all. While well, Russia intervened in the Syrian conflict this week by attacking forces opposed to President Assad's regime, though precisely which forces were targeted is a matter of dispute. Is it time for the West to work with rather than against Putin? And does the Syrian conflict have any possible resolution? You're from Syria. You've seen your homeland destroyed over the past few years, Mustafa. Do you think it's time for the West to work, cooperate more with Putin? Well, they should have started that, in fact, long, long time ago, since 2011, 2012. They have left it for far, far too late, I guess. And I think, in the first place, the Western response originally was inadequate. The bombing, let's say, is really inadequate. Now the Russian bombing is much more inadequate, is much worse, if you like. Certainly the one of the main aims of the Russian uh, adventure at the moment is to shore up President Assad and help him stay in power as long as possible. And as we've seen over the last three, four days of Russian bombings, they are doing, let us say, five uh, bombing uh, uh, on those, uh, uh, on targets, who, uh, <coughs> opponents of Assad himself. Uh, the the, um, the uh, local, of course, uh, the Syrian, the opposition, while maybe uh, targeting once or twice ISIL. So certainly the, 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 the Russian also have other aims. They are fighting for their own survival in the region itself. You mean their political survival? Political the... survival. They, uh, the Russian, they have uh, a naval base in Tartus is the only naval base they have outside Russia. They have no other where in the world. So this is strategic, strategically vital for them. Also, the uh, land base uh, uh, in Latakia, uh, uh, further north, is also of vital interest for the Russian. So they are f fighting for their own survival in the region and also... As, as well. And Nabila, uh, I mean, do you... Simplifying greatly, but the Moscow analysis appears to be you've got a choice between stability and chaos and Assad is stability and everybody else is bringing chaos. So they're all the same. I mean, Islamic State may be the worst of the worst, but all the others are lumped together. I mean, that seems to be broadly their analysis. Do you agree with that? Well, I think it's far more complicated than that. And I think we should all rightly be very concerned when Russia goes to war. And this is especially so in the case of Putin's Russia. And of course, when we're dealing with a massively muddled war zone like Syria, uh, Putin is clearly interested in uh, keeping some sort of Russian influence in the Middle East through his links with uh, President Bashar al-Assad and conveniently make out that he's finally joining uh, the war against global terrorism. Uh, everybody despises ISIS. And so Putin can uh, push his PR uh, about being involved in a bold stand against barbaric e extremism. Uh, the reality is, um, I mean, whether we should work with Putin or not, I think foreign policy and in particular uh, international diplomacy is all about making those cynical alliances at times and we should be very pragmatic about it um, and that has always been the case about foreign policy it's always driven by um, self-interest in the end and you have to get your hands dirty and engage uh, but my concerns about this pragmatic view about foreign policy is that Putin seems to be far more interested in bombing uh, pro-democracy rebels opposing Assad than he is ISIS. And this is uh, clearly very worrying. I think what Putin is hoping uh, to achieve by joining the coalition of uh, allegedly civilized nations fighting terror is that he can not only negotiate with the West, but uh, actually win Western support uh, and thus end his isolation, especially when it comes to um, <coughs> other aspects of his policy, uh, uh, and particularly in the Ukraine. Ukraine. And Stephanie, uh, how is this seen in the United States? Because there are those, and they include 
some of the President Obama's critics who say he has left a vacuum in world leadership. That's the usual critique that's made by some in the Republican Party. And it's hardly surprising if the Russians or some other people step in. Um, yeah, I mean, U.S. policy on Syria has been a disaster. Um, you know, nothing has worked. And so <coughs> Putin waltzing in looks like a bold move and perhaps will change uh, balance of power on the ground. But I think the response you saw from Obama last night and what uh, American officials have been saying um, uh, finally in reaction to this shows that they're sort of, they think this is going to backfire on Putin, that this will cause... Um, uh, you know, terrorist attacks within Russia, and they're they're playing on Putin's fear. And you know, Putin is obviously going into this because he has his own battles with Islamic extremism within Russia, uh, in the North Caucasus. There are a lot of Russian citizens, um, by some accounts, thousands fighting with ISIS in Syria. Um, and, you know, so if you look at it from, uh, you know, the problem is that Putin's worldview is very different from the U.S. worldview. Putin's aim is very clear. He's there to prop up Assad. It's part of the Putin doctrine, which is that um, state sovereignty is sort of sacrosanct, uh, even if it means supporting brutal dictators who, who maim um, their own citizens. Um, the U.S. can't can't agree, you know, they can't be seen to be backing Assad. There's no way to come up with a political solution to the war in Syria if Assad is at the table. So it, it's very unclear how this is going to pan out. Um, you know, it will change the balance of power on the ground. There's no doubt about that. Will that force um, Assad to the negotiating table? Um, uh, I, you know, it's hard to say. Polly, I mean, I, I'm just thinking of your readers sitting at home reading The Guardian and they think, I'd love to do something about Syria. This is a humanitarian catastrophe. Look at all these poor refugees and immigrants. What would be that something, given the nature of this mess now? I mean, uh, Jeremy Corbyn has suggested you, any bombing would be getting into a five-way civil war. Uh, others say, if we don't do something militarily, we can never solve it. I think Russia's entry into it has changed the nature of the game totally for, for Britain because we were about to have very soon a vote in the Commons. Cameron was going to bring it forward partly as a provocation to split Labour. Some Labour people, the moderates, would have wanted to join Cameron and say, yes, we must, it's our moral responsibility to get involved. We should show we're standing, as we always do, standing alongside the United States. And if they want us to come in and join the bottom, we should. I think that's totally gone away. Uh, I hear now that. Cameron has uh, not has suggested that there is not going to be any vote any time soon. There are at least 30 Conservative MPs who would vote against, so he hasn't got a majority. He needs some of those Labour, majority, those Labour moderates to come across. I don't think any of them would now, uh, partly because the idea of precision bombing we've seen today is... Uh, <laughs> Kunduz. Uh, Kunduz. We've seen in Kunduz. Some where, people have been killed. Yes. I mean, you know, the Americans try their best. I think they really, I think Obama really tries seriously not to kill civilians, but you always do. And when you have a horror like a hospital being killed that had actually told the Americans where they were, plainly an accident, the idea of precision bombing, let alone the fact that Putin's motives may actually be to hit the pro-democratic side as opposed to the ISIS side, makes the whole pool so murky. Why would we, with our few pathetic bombs, purely a token gesture, say, oh, we want to go in there and drop some bombs too? It doesn't really matter where. I think we, we, I think we rather like the idea of bombing Raqqa. I think that's what we've got our eye on. What on earth is that about? I don't think there'd be any public support for it unless there was a purpose, we were contributing something, and there was a, 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 an exit strategy with some f form of peace at the end, of which we see nothing. But what you are seeing across Europe is growing cynicism. Frankly, peace at any price. The refugee situation is now so appalling that we'll sit down with almost anybody. If it means Assad's got to stay, if it means making peace with the Russians, so be it. I feel that's the undertow. Nobody's quite saying that, but I think that's the direction that it's moving in. Yeah. Eventually, I think, events will go down this route anyhow. But the, the, do not limit the crisis to what just the Russians are doing and the coalition uh, is doing. There are some other regional powers extremely involved in this tragedy itself. Iran, for example, through it is Hezbollah. They are doing a lot of bad things in the country. What about Saudi Arabia? Because I'm coming to too. that. So if you want to move ahead towards any, I wouldn't say solution, because in my view, unfortunately, 
this, the solution for Syria will take very, very long time, maybe decades, not years. You have to bring in Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Iran into the whole pot itself, with the Russian, of course, uh, and start talking. What the hell, which piece? of this cake you want. I mean, Bill, is, it, is it too cynical to think that there are some people for whom there's a great benefit in just keeping this going? Well, I think, you know, as Mustafa rightly said, it's very hard to see any uh, solution anytime soon and certainly not in the short term because there are so many sides involved and so much hatred uh, involved. I think one of the problems is also due to the fact that the West and its allies, America specifically and its allies, have a very focused view of the problem and they see ISIS as a very specific problem while perhaps overlooking the wider picture in the region. And it, you know, groups, extremist groups, the emergence of extremist groups like uh, ISIS actually were brought by, you know, the intense violence that the Americans and its allies uh, brought to countries like I Iraq and indeed Libya. And also the power vacuum that was there in particular uh, the Sunni areas. which and uh, nasty groups exploit, you know, to, to a, a sinister uh, level. But un uh, until America and its allies keep looking at this problem, you know, uh, answering intense violence with intense violence that they created in the first place, then... You know, there's what about safe havens? They keep talking about perhaps well, we can create safe havens. Is there any realism in that at all, do you well, think? Well, I think there is. I think at the end of the day, they are going to uh, uh, create safe havens, not only one in the north along the Turkish borders, everywhere else in the south as well. Don't but somebody forget. has to defend them to make them safe. That's <laughs> always the catch, isn't it? Well, Srebrenica in 1993, safe haven, people were killed because it wasn't properly defended. And I don't see any appetite from people to go in and actually defend them. They'd love to have them if somebody else would protect them. That's the, but the catch, it would, isn't it? it would decrease the amount of agony and tragedy in the country. But would you need the UN then, troops? And well, yes, the UN doesn't have the money or the forces. Any if longer. anything, look at look at what Putin has done. He has actually created his own safe haven for the naval base that they are, Absolutely. and it shows how it is possible to do it. Well, if, as long as it's a naval base. <laughs> right, let's move on because David Cameron went into the main.